Good morning. Welcome to Christ Covenant Church. This morning, the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. We are delighted that you have joined your church family in worship this morning in whatever way you've chosen, whether it's here in person or virtually through the many ways on the internet uh, that that's provided. Uh, please join me in our opening call to worship, which is up here on the screen. Come, take refuge in the Lord, for God is good. Come and rejoice, for Christ will provide peace for you. Come, open your hearts to the Holy Spirit, and you will be given blessings. Amen. Now please join me in the opening prayer from Hildegard von Bingen almost a thousand years ago, which is also up here on the screen. Holy Spirit, making life alive, moving in all things, root of all being, cleansing the cosmos of every impurity, effacing guilt anointing wounds. You are lustrous and praiseworthy life. You waken and reawaken everything that is. Lead us in our worship. Amen. Now please join me in welcoming Meredith, who will bless us with our opening song today, Come Spirit Come.
facial invitation. <laughs> <laughs> so all the kids want to come up for the children's sermon. So. Do you remember what we talked about in Sunday school last week? What happened? Do you remember, Chloe? What happened? Do you, oh, Evie, what happened? Oh, excellent, Evie. If you didn't hear Evie, we learned about how God made the world. How many days did it take God to make the world? Good job again, Evie. Six days to make the world. And on the sixth day, oh, this is tough. Let's see if Evie's going to be up to the challenge, or maybe Ella. Oh, what was the last thing on the sixth day? What did God make? Land animals. And one more thing, who else did he make? Besides the animals, he made... <laughs> He made humans, excellent. But did he make all the humans or just one human? Yep, he did make all of them, but on the sixth day, he only made one, and his name was Adam. So we learned that God was good and God cares for us. So today, we're gonna hear another story about Adam and how Adam got a wife and how Adam and his wife did something that God did not want them to do. Oh, oh Evie knows it already, but she's not going to tell her. Well, you know what, Evie? When we go downstairs, I'm going to sit on a carpet square, and you're going to teach us. How does that sound? Like a good plan? I think so, too. So. Wow, a kid's Bible and a whole Bible. I have one of those, well, two of those too. I even have like different ones. So, but yeah, so we want to learn and think about God and how much God loves us and all of the wonderful things that God does for us. And the only thing that God wants for us in return is for him to love us, for us to love him. All right, and do we love God? Chloe, do you love God? Juliana? Good. Evie? Good. Miss Heidi? Good. <gasps> Ella? Good. All right, Miss Sandy? Yes, I definitely love God. So how about we fold our hands, say a little prayer, and then we'll go downstairs. All right, dear God, thank you for bringing all of these girls together today. And thank you for helping them to learn about you. And thank you for all of the wonderful things you do for us. Amen. I love shoes. I love shiny shoes. Thank you, Sandy. Good morning, friends. Today we will be reading from Ephesians 2, 14 to 22. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people. When in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law 
with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between the Jews and the Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. Together, as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility toward each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together, we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and cornerstone is Jesus Christ himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Now we're going to hear Jim's message. Uh, it will be on video. Um, just a, a side note, he did this before he knew his brother-in-law had passed uh, untimely this week, so. Friends, our next text for today comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 30. Romans 8, 26 through 30, and this is from the New Living Translation. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays with us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Isn't that awesome? Harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to the purposes for them. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to be like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among all many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. May God add a blessing to this, the reading of his holy word. And friends, whether you are in the sanctuary this morning or whether you are watching on video, this is a little bit different, right? This is a little bit different. Uh, Pastor Kathy and Kaisa and I are on vacation. We're down in Florida. We've been at Universal Studios, Harry Potter World, and now this morning we're near uh, Sanibel, and we're going to go do some beach stuff. I thought about wearing flip-flops and a golf shirt and, and uh, short pants, uh, but I uh, refrained from that. But I am grateful for those leading worship and for those of you that are here this morning one of the things we thought about this, we thought about uh, having someone from our congregation preach, and we have many able people to be able to do that. But we're in the middle of this uh, Covenant Affirmations series, this six-part series, and we thought that because it's talking about Covenant Affirmations, that Pastor Kathy and I uh, credentialed and ordained in the Covenant Church, we thought that it would be better if one of us preached today on this, uh, on this affirmation. And so, friends, uh, grace and peace to each of you from our Lord, Savior, and friend, Jesus Christ. Well, when I was a kid in Minnesota, 
we knew fall was coming when there was an occasional frost on the ground in the morning, uh, when you started breaking out the flannel shirts and when all things apple started appearing. Apple pies, apple cider, apple this and apple that. And speaking of Minnesota, just a little aside, I'm wearing my uh, Minnesota gopher lapel pin today. I'm hoping that yesterday uh, the gophers in football uh, beat Maryland, and I'm hoping that in hockey last night the men's team beat their arch rival, the University of Minnesota Duluth. I'm getting all into fall here. I don't know if you can see this or not, but I'm wearing my favorite fall socks. Look at those beautiful fall colored socks if you can see them. Uh, thinking about fall, and I'm also uh, wearing this tie today, uh, maroon and gold, not just for the University of Minnesota, but also uh, that is uh, the color of the house that Harry Potter lived in, uh, in, the, in the books, the Harry Potter books. He lived in Gryffindor House at Hogwarts School there, and this actually is an official Harry Potter tie. And so he, here we are continuing with this fall theme, uh, football, uh, hockey starting, wearing my great socks, and thinking about all things Apple. But nowadays, sometimes that shift has moved when it comes to fall from Apple to something else. Can any of you tell me, maybe you just you know say it, whatever, can any of you tell me what two words portend or predict that fall is on the way or is rapidly approaching. And for us now, on this day, October 24th, is here in full force. Fall is here in full force. Any thoughts about those two words? Not apple. Pumpkin spice. Pumpkin spice. Yes, pumpkin spice. It shows up with great force. It makes its appearance and then it disappears for the next eight or nine months to be forgotten until next fall when pumpkin spice will appear again with its vengeance. Well, friends, at times, I think that's how it is in the church and in the lives of believers when it comes to thinking about and considering the Holy Spirit. Because we in the covenant are rooted in historic Christianity, we affirm that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit continues the creative work of God the Father and the redeeming work of Christ the Son in our faith and in the life of our church. The Holy Spirit encourages us to live out our faith and convicts us in our hearts when we move away from that faith, when we sin, it is for these reasons that we in the Covenant Church have emphasized and will continue to emphasize the continuing work of the Holy Spirit. Thus, this affirmation for today, conscious dependence upon the Holy Spirit. But sometimes, like pumpkin spice, we kind of forget about the Holy Spirit. Sure. We remember the Holy Spirit at Pentecost when the banners are different colors than the green we've got today. But sometimes then the Holy Spirit after Pentecost just kind of flits away, just kind of fades away from our focus. And it shouldn't be that way. And hopefully today we all will be encouraged by and about the Holy Spirit as we focus again on this affirmation, conscious dependence on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, being God, three in one, one in three, uh, does all kinds of things. But I'd like to focus on three things this morning uh, that the Holy Spirit encourages us, the Holy Spirit unites us, and the Holy Spirit points us to mission. We all need a little encouragement from time to time, right? I think that's true. It's uh, great when someone comes alongside you and gives you some words of hope, isn't it? I remember many years ago, in fact, I think it might have been when I was in seminary, 30 years ago, 
Uh, a good friend of mine listened to a sermon that I preached, and he compared favorably to the preaching style of my all-time hero pastor, Glenn Wyburn. Wow, did that make me feel good then? And I think you can see by the smile and the countenance of my face that that still makes me feel good. That little bit of encouragement from my friend, Dave Bell. Thank you, Dave Bell, if you end up watching this. About the Holy Spirit, how's this for encouragement? In John 1, John the Baptist baptizes Jesus, and then in verse 32, we read this, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. So, the Holy Spirit came visibly and physically to Jesus. That's fantastic. Later in John 14, when teaching about the Holy Spirit, Jesus tells his followers, and as always, that includes us, Jesus tells his followers this. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. You talk about good news, good news, great news. You talk about encouragement. Here we find out that the same Holy Spirit that lives in Jesus will be living in us. The same Spirit that led and guided Jesus and gave him power over death is the same Spirit that will be and is living in each one of, the, of, of us. Can I get an amen? Because this Holy Spirit living in Jesus is the same Holy Spirit living in believers, Paul wrote later on in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, It is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. Awesome, right? Christ living in us through the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that encouraged Jesus and filled him with the presence of God is the same Holy Spirit that encouraged Paul and filled him with the presence of God and is the same Holy Spirit that encourages us and fills us with the presence of God, both as individuals and as a covenant church. Friends, the Holy Spirit also works for unity. We are a, 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 a nation that is kind of not always as united as we'd like, right? This makes sense that the Holy Spirit works for unity. It makes sense that unity is a hallmark of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. Three in one, one in three. God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they are all one, have existed together forever and will exist together forever in the Godhead. The Bible shows and affirms that the Holy Spirit works within and among people and the church. It is the Holy Spirit that brings people together who are far off from God, allowing them to be made one with Christ. We read about that a little while ago in a service a few weeks ago uh, from Ephesians 2, and here are verses 17 and 18. Jesus brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him, and peace to the Jews who were near. Now, all of us, we're talking about unity, now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. Because the Holy Spirit unites us deep down in our core, in our inmost being, the Apostle Paul asserts that we believers are no longer uh, no, no longer are just strangers who happen to gather together, but we are more. We are brothers and sisters. From 1 Corinthians 15, 58, we receive this good news, and we heard about it in our text for today as well. From, where did it go? From Romans 8 as well. So Romans 8, 1 Corinthians 15, we receive this good news, these words of unity. So, 
my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. That's great news about unity, that we, we, and we on the video, we here in the sanctuary, we are brothers and sisters. And as an aside, I remind you of that last part of that verse. I take this as encouragement. You know, COVID over the last 18, 19 months or however long it's been, 20 months, has put uh, a lot of people into a funk just into a funk. But hear this with open ears and an open heart. Always, that last part of that verse, those verses, always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. The Holy Spirit unites us, friends, brothers and sisters, as individuals and in the church to share and show the love of Christ to all people. And remember, in this unity, know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Uh, I read recently that at Disney World, now we weren't at Disney World, we were at Universal Studios, but I read recently that at Disney World, the employees aren't supposed to point to anything. They're not supposed to point to anything, like when giving directions. Oh, Epcot, it's over there. Oh, you know, it's a small world. It's over there. Oh, you want a whatever, a turkey leg. It's over there. The employees are never supposed to point when giving directions. In fact, this article I read said that they are not allowed to point. The reason being is that in some cultures, and you know, people from all around the world come to Disney World. And the reason being is that in some cultures, pointing is considered rude or bad form. And they don't want to offend anybody, and that's great. For me, me, when giving or receiving directions, pointing is helpful. The Holy Spirit points us toward mission. And that mission is, as noted a bit ago, to share and show the love of God in Christ Jesus to other people. At Jesus' ascension, when he, when he returned to heaven after his uh, arrest, uh, beating, sham trial, crucifixion, death, uh, resurrection, uh, moving around for 40 days, performing miracles, and his ascension. Uh, as recorded in Acts 1, Jesus is speaking to his followers before being taken up into heaven. He tells them, and us, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The direction or pointing from the Holy Spirit here is twofold. First, that we will receive power from the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will dwell in us as in Christ. And then with that Holy Spirit dwelling in us, we are pointed toward our other assignment, if you will. We are to be witnesses for Jesus. Telling people about me everywhere, the text says, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And here we are, friends. Here we are. Not in Jerusalem, not in Judea, not in Samaria, but in southeast Pennsylvania, or wherever you're watching from, which to those gathered around Jesus at his ascension would have certainly seemed like the ends of the earth. They didn't even know we existed. So certainly we would have been to the ends of the earth from them. Knowing the Holy Spirit points us to mission and that it is to share and show the love of Jesus with others, what are we to do and how are we to do it? The good news is this, and we almost always go over this at Pentecost, but a little review is always welcome. We know that the Holy Spirit 
gives each one of us, each one of us, gifts, abilities, desires, or talents that are used for encouraging others and the building up of the church to strengthen each of us and to strengthen the church. Paul writes this about these gifts from 1 Corinthians 12. There are different kinds of gifts, spiritual gifts, but the same spirit, the same spirit that unites us all, right? The same spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help others. Paul then lists here, and he lists it in other places too, like in Romans 12, what some of these gifts and talents and abilities are and how they can be used. An important thing to remember is this, that we all have them, that we all have them. The Holy Spirit has given them to each of us as a gift. And therefore, like all gifts, we should open them up. That's what we do in the Covenant Church. We affirm and encourage the Holy Spirit to live in and through us as individuals and as a church, using those gifts, opening them up for ministry. Because we are all, as individuals, different from everybody else, the gift that the Holy Spirit gives each of us is unique for each one of us. None of us have the exact same gift set from the Holy Spirit. None of us. And because Christ Covenant Church is different and unique from any other church in the world, covenant or not, the ways that the Holy Spirit empowers us as a church will be different than any other church in the world. Friends, brothers and sisters, what is or what are the ministries that the Holy Spirit is empowering you for? And sisters and brothers, again, catch that, sisters and brothers, at Christ's covenant, what is or what are the ministries that the Holy Spirit is empowering us for as a church? Let us, friends, sisters and brothers, let us continue to discern and act as we as individuals, as a church, and as an evangelical covenant church, continue to consciously depend upon the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bow our heads and prepare our hearts to pray. Father, there are several known needs from our church family that we call on your mighty hand of healing, strength, and direction. We lift Claude and Kathy Bevan Charlotte and Dave Williams, Joan Whitney, and Kitty Lapp. We pray continuously for their ongoing journeys of recovery. We lift Linda Bear, who had a knee replacement this week and has had a, a rough go. And Lord, we pray that uh, she returns home today from the hospital. There are others among us that you are aware of need your healing touch physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Provide in your perfect way for their healing comfort and renewed strength. 
We ask for your comfort and peace to our pastors, Jim and Kathy, and their daughter, Kaisa, in the sudden passing of Jim's brother-in-law, Bill. Be with Bill's, be with Bill's family, his wife, Sue, and their five children, and all their extended family as they grieve. Surround them with your presence as they progress and process the days and weeks ahead. Father, you gave us the most wonderful gift of your Holy Spirit. Pastor Jim read to us in Romans how your Holy Spirit pleads and intercedes for us on our behalf when life becomes overwhelming and difficult. That same power, Lord, that you had is also in us. What, what a comfort that is. Thank you for your gift. All we need to do is ask, and your Holy Spirit is there working for us in a mighty way. Nothing is too large or too small to bring before you. And now we silently offer our needs, our desires, and our praises to you. As we come to the end of our worship time, we thank you for this hour of peace. We thank you for the freedom that we have to worship you. Continue to bless our country with that freedom. We know our world needs your intervention. Make your light shine where darkness resides. Bring those who don't know your way and your truth to that knowledge. Grow each one of us in your light to shine and be examples for you. We pray for those around the world who face torture and persecution for their faith. We lift up to you the American missionaries and children who were abducted in Haiti. Shield them with your protection. Provide a safe return for those faithful servants. Now let us join together and say the prayer your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Stand if you are able to sing the closing hymn, Go My Children. It's in the blue hymnal, 676.
And now, receive the benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated. A few announcements um, that I'd like to bring to your attention. There are um, still positions for the leadership roles in our church. Um, reach out to our chairman, our co-chairman, uh, Wendy or Nicole. I was told, quote, come one, come all. We are going to have fun. So, I am not doubting Wendy's statement. So now's the time, my friends, to serve. Uh, we still need volunteers for our children's church. Um, it's, it's a need that we really do need. And the curriculum is provided. And we need the adults and the children to do a six-week rotation. So um, if anyone's willing to do that, please let Sandy Thayer know. We also have Thanksgiving baskets we're collecting for. We'd like to have 25. Um, baskets are $60, but any contribution that you're willing to make would be appreciated. Um, there's a wooden box that looks like a church in our narthex. If you could put your donation in that box and mark it for Thanksgiving baskets by November 14th. Next week is the last week we are taking the donations for the Keystone Opportunity and they go underneath the table in the narthex. Um, mark your calendars for the annual meeting November 21st. And I think that that covers it. Um, let us be blessed by the proselyte, by Jeff, um, the glory of the spirit. May you all go in peace and serve the world in light.